the R7 5800X 3D. A gift to AM Pro motherboards adopters. Next generation performance on the same socket? What a great longevity AM Pro platform has. In this video, I'm helping my friend upgrade his R7 3700X to the R7 5800X 3D and see the difference in performance. My friend has bought the R7 3700X back in 2021 during the height of the pandemic. He was upgrading his old i5-6600 and GTX 1060. He was so lucky to be able to buy the new release RX 6700 during the scalper era for MSRP. I was always teasing him on how lucky he was because he said he didn't even try that hard. He just went to AMD's website and tried to buy it. And he actually did while all other people were waiting hours or even days on queue just to get a drop. So then, he upgraded to the R7 3700X and RX 6700 XT, a beast of a computer, especially during 2021. The RX 6700 XT trade blows with the previous NVIDIA flagship, the RTX 2080 Ti, and it actually has 1GB more VRAM, 12 vs 11 to be exact. But now, in 2023, the R7 3700X is showing a bit of its age. He's playing a newly released title called Ghost War Tokyo, and it's stuttering quite a bit. He plays with 24-inch 1080p monitor, so the 3700X bottlenecks the 6700 XT at some games. So when the R7 5800X 3D went down around 300 euros, he decided that it's time to upgrade. And here we are. The R7 5800X 3D is the first CPU with a 3D stacked Altercache technology. This feature allows the X3D version to have a whopping 96MB of L3 cache compared to the 32MB of the regular 5800X. What does adding more cache on CPU do you might ask? Well, let me show you. According to hardware unbox findings, the X3D is 15% faster compared to the vanilla 5800X just by adding this cache. Actually, the X3D version is also running lower boost clock, 4.5 versus the 4.7 of the non-X3D version. This works because having information directly stored in the cache allows the CPU to gather data way, way, way faster compared to system memory. This is such a marvelous piece of engineering. Props to AMD for figuring out this technology like this. As I stated, the X3D is running at a lower frequency, so for multi-core and single-core productivity benchmarks, the X3D will be a tad slower than the 5800X, while the X3D will be faster in gaming scenarios. Here are the specs of the R7 5800X3D. And here are the complete test system. Unfortunately, I was able to test just 5 games because of time constraint. My friend lives quite far away from me, so these games will have to do for now. Let's start with Fortnite. As you can see, the R7 5800X 3D has a huge lead compared to the 3700X, a whopping 80% faster, which translates to 247.5 FPS average compared to the 137.1 FPS on the 3700X. Not only the average has improved, but also the more important 1% lows. Funnily enough, the 1% lows of the X3D are almost as fast as the average FPS of the 3700X. The X3D is such a beast of a CPU. The X3D is delivering 132 FPS on the 1% lows, while the 3700X is capable of delivering 79.7 FPS. The X3D is performing really well in this game. Are you guys ready? Are you sure? Well, I warned you. The X3D is 90% faster in Valorant. 90%! That's almost twice the performance just for a CPU upgrade. This is so impressive. The 3D stack cache CPU is delivering a monstrous 833.3 FPS average, while the R7 3700X is pushing up to 438.1 FPS average. 
are these FPS even playable? Anything below 1000 FPS is just unplayable. We all know that, right guys? The 1% loss on the X3D is just like Fortnite. Wait, it's actually better. It's faster than the average of the 3700X. 458 versus the 218.4 of the 3700X. Let's jump to a heavier Tron game. Cyberpunk 2077. The 5800X 3D is 33% faster than the 3700X. Not as high as the previous titles, but it's still impressive. This is a AAA title that requires a lot more horsepower to run, and despite that, the X 3D is pushing 33% faster performance. I'm so impressed with this CPU. The average FPS is 154.6 FPS for X3D and 115.8 FPS for the 3700X. The 1% loss has also got more uplift in performance, a 43% faster gaming performance in terms of 1% loss, 90 FPS for the 3D stacked and 62.8 for the 3700X. Let's jump to Red Dead Redemption 2. The X3D is boosting performance by 28%. It's a harder to run AAA title game for the GPU. The difference here is lower, but then again, getting close to 30% performance uplift just by upgrading your CPU while using the same motherboard, RAM, and GPU is such an amazing feeling. The X3D has an average of 136.2 FPS, while on the other side, the 3700X is pushing 106.2 FPS average. The 1% posts have also gotten 28% faster, 49.3 versus the 38.5. Playing Red Dead Redemption 2 with the R7 5800X 3D will be a breeze. Ghostwire Tokyo was a personal request by my friend for me to test. He just bought this game and it wasn't running as he hoped on his previous 3700X. In fact, the 3700X is delivering 85.5 FPS average, but the 1% loss, that is quite harsh, at 32.5 FPS. Then, when we tested the X3D, both of our eyes just got really wide and our jaw dropped. The X3D is giving us 148.1 FPS average a 73% performance uplift in this visually stunning game. And that's not all, the 1% loss have risen to 52.6, meaning a 62% uplift. Well, these are only 5 games. The data is really small, but I'm still interested to see, on average, how much we've improved by moving to the 5800X3D. According to my calculations, the X3D with these 5 games is 61% faster compared to the 3700X. This is a huge performance uplift just a generation later. Considering the 3700X has a Zen 2 architecture and the 5800X Zen 3 which was the successor. 3 years later, you're able to upgrade from a previous AM4 CPU to the 5800X3D without changing anything else. Such an amazing CPU and platform. So, to conclude this video, my friend upgrade was a huge success. An amazing 61% uplift in performance is nothing to sneeze at. The 5800X3D is pretty much on par or really close with the non X3D 7000 series CPU of AMD. Truly a next generation performance on AM4 platform. I can't say anything negative about this CPU. With this rig, it can upgrade to the next generation GPUs and still have enough horsepower to run them. Especially in the future when graphics card will become faster, running 1440p graphics will be easier and even 1440p monitors will be cheaper as well, hopefully. Meaning CPU bottleneck will be a lot lower. If there's a future-proof CPU, the R7 5800X CDD is probably one of them. I cannot compliment this CPU enough. If you're on the same boat, if you're running on older generation Ryzen CPUs on AM4 platform, 
the R7 5800X3D is the ultimate upgrade for gaming. For productivity task though, as I have stated, it is running at a lower frequency, making it lose to the regular 1500X. So if you're interested in productivity performance, it's better for you to look elsewhere. Maybe the 5900X, which can be found at a similar price to the 1500X3D. But it's up to you to choose if you want productivity or gaming performance. Thanks for watching the video everybody. I appreciate the support. Give a like if you like the video. Subscribe to not miss upcoming YouTube videos. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. Share this video if you know someone would want to see it. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Bye!